The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday. It is so good to greet those of you who are here in the sanctuary and to welcome those who are joining us on the live stream or who are watching this as a recorded service. I want to offer a special word of welcome to visitors and guests who we have with us here today. If you are a visitor, we welcome you in Christ's name, and we pray that you will experience the joy of Christ's love for you this morning. For folks here in the sanctuary, I want to ask you to please take a moment now and double check your cell phones and make sure that they are completely silenced for our service today. If you are with us online, you can go to www.rlcmilford.com connect and you will find a bulletin for our service there that you can download to follow along with our worship. In the bulletin, you'll see our dedications for all the beautiful Easter flowers that folks have donated and also gifts for local assistance to local needs through the pastor's discretionary fund. We thank all of you for your generosity in that. In the bulletin, there's also news about our Christian Service Committee and our music ministries that are going to have a wonderful morning here this morning. And in that spirit, I do want to say thank you to everyone who has been working so hard up front and behind the scenes to make our Lent, Holy Week, and Easter services so special. The people who set up worship, the people who moved things, our, our choir, our handbell ringers, and especially our staff, Gail Kelso, um, Mary Lou Wilson, our daycare director, and Pat Sparks, our office administrator. Just so much work went into it, and we are so thankful. You're invited to stay after this service. There's coffee fellowship down the hall, so we hope that you will connect with each other. Our adult Bible study is taking a break this week and next week, but May 1st, we are going to be starting a three-week session that is partly a new members class aimed at folks who uh, might be interested in joining Reformation, but it is also for people who are already members of our church. We'll have more details of that coming, but I do hope you will mark your calendars May 1st in between the services for a great time of growth together. Also, our daily devotions are taking a two-week break but they will be coming back soon. If you are participating in our church's life, I want to encourage you to take the step of financially supporting our ministry. In addition to the offering plate that we have in the narthex, you can go to rlcmilford.com give for online offerings. Your sacrificial giving enables us to share the hope of Jesus with more and more people. And as you give financially, as you give of your time and your energy and your effort and service, thank you for helping our congregation thrive. And now we begin our worship with a prelude by our Reformation Ringers.
Please stand. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, in the resurrection of your Son, you have redeemed the world from sin and death. Grant to us and to your whole church joyful faith in your saving power, so that by your Spirit we may bear witness to your goodness and grace, and the world may come to know your love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the children's sermon. The children are invited to come forward and sit up here with me for the children's sermon. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see everyone this morning. Oh, it's okay. I know it's your first children's sermon. It's all good. Don't worry. <laughs> good morning. Well, I'm so happy to see you, and we haven't had a children's sermon in a long time, so I'm so glad you're here. And tell me how old you are. Eight. How old are you? Six. Three months. Eight. Ten, and how old are you? Five. All right. Well, it's great to see all of you here, and the children's sermon is a chance for us to talk and tell stories about Jesus and talk about what those stories mean for our lives. And the stories about Jesus are important for us and give us hope and help us with our life, whether we are a few months old or five years old or ten years old, or my age, or however old the people are here, right? Jesus is important for all of us. So today is Easter, and this is an exciting day. Now let me back up a minute and tell you what led up to Easter. So as you know, Jesus was God's son, and Jesus was fully God, and he was also a person. And Jesus came to the earth, he told everyone about God's love, he did so many miracles, he healed people, he did amazing things. And a lot of people really liked Jesus, and they started following him. Those were his disciples, right? The disciples were Jesus' special helpers. But some people started thinking, I don't know, Jesus is trying to change a lot of things. He's talking about God in a new way. And people didn't want things to change. And they got jealous that he was so popular. And so some people put Jesus to death. And a few days ago, Jesus died on the cross. And that was a really sad day. Everyone was sad. Even his disciples, his special friends, thought that was the end. But guess what? God is stronger than death. God is stronger than anything. So on Easter morning, when some of Jesus' friends went to prepare his body, they went to the tomb where he was, and they expected to see his body, but they had a big surprise. The tomb was empty. Jesus wasn't there. And they had no idea what was happening. They thought, how can this be? Jesus died. He should be here. But then they found out through an angel and through Jesus himself appearing to them, Jesus said, I am alive. God has made me alive again. Go and tell everyone about that. Well, that is great news for us because sometimes we make mistakes or we are sad or we feel disappointed. But we know that in God, anything is possible. God raised Jesus from the dead because he loved us so much and wanted to forgive us and give us new life and eternal life with God forever. So Easter is something we can remember and celebrate every day because it means that God loved us so much, he wouldn't let anything get in the way of Jesus being alive again. So to help us all remember that, would you take one of these bracelets? You can pick one out, and you can take one of these. And what does it say on there, Lexi? Bless you. What is this? Do you want to take one? Grace, can you take one for your brother? Right, it says, Jesus loves me. So that is a reminder that Jesus loves us so much that Jesus is alive, and that Jesus gives us the forgiveness of sins and eternal life forever and ever. Is there a symbol on there? Do you see any, along with the words, what's on there? Yeah. A heart with a cross inside. Right, so that's the cross of Jesus. 
and the cross that's now empty because Jesus is alive. And that heart reminds us that God loves us and is always with us. So I hope you'll share that good news of Easter with your family and friends, and we'll keep celebrating that Jesus is risen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats now. A reading from Isaiah. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen, my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. A reading from First Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, and the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to, to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood before them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. 
but these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now everything, everything is different. And understand why this matters so much. We're going to go from the empty tomb to 1929, the Rose Bowl college football game, the California Golden Bears versus Georgia Tech. And it looked like in the second quarter, a California player known as Wrong Way Roy Rigels was about to become the hero of the game. Georgia Tech coughed up the ball. It fumbled. It's on the ground. Rigel scoops it up, runs it 65 yards, getting tackled one yard shy of a touchdown. What a way to set his team up to score, right? Like they say, defense wins championships. Except, did you notice what I called him? Wrong way, Roy? Yeah, you see where this is going. He did scoop that fumble up, and he ran it hard, 65 yards in the wrong direction. Somehow he got turned around and ran straight for his own end zone, and the player that finally brought him down was his own teammate desperately trying to keep him from scoring for the other side. And why am I telling you this? Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. Death has been defeated by life, and the grave is no longer the end of your story. Sin and evil on that Good Friday, they did their worst, killing the very Son of God. And he walks right back onto the stage with forgiveness and love. All the rules are different now. And the one thing I want most this morning is for none of us to leave today running towards the wrong end zone. What do I mean? Let's be honest. It is so easy for us to go through life as if Easter didn't really happen. We can be running with all our might as fast as we can, headed for the wrong goal, driven by the fear that evil might win, that death is final. Now, I'm not just talking about being afraid of our last breath. I mean all the smaller deaths that strike us. Those moments of rejection, failure, when we hit the limits of our own bodies, all the losses that haunt us, the burdens of guilt and worry, and don't we spend so much of our life's energy running away from the possibility of these things even happening? Think about how much life, real life, we miss out on. All because we're scared of the risks. Think of everything we do to try to deny or shield ourselves from anxiety or worry or shame. See, all this is is being spun around and running for the wrong end zone. Going for the goal of success, 
money, reputation, self-fulfillment, achievement, whatever it is that we think we so desperately need. And even when we make it there, that's not where you're meant to be. We're just scoring touchdowns for the opposition. So, if you ever find yourself running in that direction, if you're still playing by the rules that death really is the end, I got some good news for you. Jesus is running after you. Not in anger. Now, he's not chasing you down to condemn you, but to save you with his love. Jesus is not the referee getting ready to eject you from the game. He's on your side. Like the teammate trying to turn you around before you run up the score against yourself. See, Christ's death and resurrection really do change the whole game. A different end zone matters now. Because even death, even death will be undone by resurrection. You can know that there is life and promise on the other side of all of our losses. Because sin really is forgiven by God, there is unending mercy for all of our failures. So, what is the end zone that we should be running towards? Where do we go if we want to win this game? Well, see, that's kind of the trick. Once Easter comes, the game's already over. Christ is risen and he is victorious. You don't have to win anything now. All those sins and failures you're trying to overcome, they're forgiven. Christ has already spiked that ball. Death? Yeah, death will still yell at you from the sideline, but you don't have to pay attention. It's done. The only running that's left for us now is like the celebration after the Super Bowl with all the confetti flying in the air. And this celebration is the life of Easter. It's the hope. The hope that comes when you realize that death doesn't have a hold on you anymore. You can face all of life's challenges, even your very worst fears, with courage and strength. Because Jesus has already handled the worst that could ever happen. And his victory is all yours. This new life looks like humility. As we receive forgiveness, we don't have to hide who we are. We don't have to conceal our weakness or our failures. We can simply be us, trusting that God's love embraces us. And in that embrace, we can let his word start to mess with us, start to transform us, making us more and more into the people that God created us to be in the first place. This new reality is running toward relationships and community instead of chasing all those other things we think we want. It's about being together with others, serving them, letting go of our preferences and agendas so we can be part of something so much bigger than ourselves. 
This is the way of freedom. It's the way of joy and peace. This is the path where you will discover the power of God at work in you and through you. This celebration, this resurrection is how we become the people that God can use to make this world more like he wants it to be. That is what Easter opens up. So let me ask you to think hard about this today. Which end zone are you running towards? Does the fear of death have you chasing false promises that are just going to leave you empty? Does the weight of guilt or worry have you hiding behind false pretenses? You can stop running. Let Jesus turn you around. His grace creates a whole new game, and he has already won it for you. So don't waste one more minute running the wrong way. Because Jesus is alive, you are free to hope, to risk, to be changed, to serve and to love. You have nothing to fear because Jesus has defeated all evil and he will lead you on the path of joy and peace. That is the gift of his resurrection for you and for the world. And may all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please stand.
confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the glory of Christ's resurrection, let us bring our needs and the needs of the world before the Lord, who makes all things new. Almighty God, we cannot grasp all that you have done for us in the resurrection of your Son. Open our hearts to believe in your grace, so that we may be filled with your joy and power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, turn us from our old ways of life under the fear of death and the burden of sin. Lead us into freedom, love, and joy in the light of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, Holy Spirit, give us greater faith, compassion, and courage. Send us into the world to serve and witness as your instruments of reconciliation, healing, and redemption. Teach us to follow your will, so that our life together may be an example of the gospel-saving power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, heal those who are ill with COVID-19. Bring peace to every nation and deliver the people of Ukraine from invasion and war. Protect those suffering persecution, especially in China. Provide for the hungry, lift up the oppressed, and use your church to minister to the needs of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift before you now those who are sick, grieving, or in other special needs, especially Pastor John Rainey, Ray Gannon, Lee Clark, June Breitfeller, Linda Kakamis, Barbara Seth, David, Keith Wilson, Todd French, Don Hanna, Kathy Hubbard, Donna Abel, Greg Waddington, Katie De Silva, Irene Ward, Corey Subjinski, Helene Reed, Pete Murphy, Johnny Lynn Jones, Patty Dolliver, Dickie Cooper, Diana Smith, Walter Donovan, Nanette Cassell and those who we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of light and life, hear these and all our prayers, so that the world may be redeemed from sin and sorrow, and so that all people may know your never-ending love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, O Lord, make us bold to pray as your Son taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. If you're watching the live stream or the recorded service and others are with you, please greet them with the sign of God's peace. For those of us in the sanctuary, please remain in your places, but you may turn and wave to those in the sanctuary, wishing them God's peace.
For those who are joining us online, we are glad that you're worshiping with us on this Easter Sunday, and we look forward to seeing you in person or online again soon. At this point, we want to say goodbye to you and bless you to trust in that victory that Jesus has won for you in his death and resurrection this day. Be at peace and serve the Lord wherever you are. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.